We want to thank you for tuning in today to our newest program, Talking It Out. In this newest segment, Pastor David and Lorray will be discussing such topics as Bible prophecy, current events, and the Word of God. We trust each of you will enjoy today's edition of Talking It Out. Hello, friends. Pastor David Langford here today with my daughter, Lorray, and we'd like to welcome you to this edition of Talking It Out. We want to say thank you for the many comments that you send and the many questions that you send asking about particular Bible verses and what they mean. And that's the real purpose and impetus behind the Talking It Out series Mm -hmm. is to discuss the scriptures uh, that we all might grow in the grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. That was one of the closing admonitions Mm -hmm. from the Apostle Peter in 2 Peter 3.18, where he said, but grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Christ Jesus. So the Talking It Out series is here for the purpose of trying to answer your questions. We get a lot of questions. Uh, People want to know, and rightfully so. And we try as best we can to maintain a biblical foundation. Everything that we teach, preach, advocate is based solely from the Word of God. Uh, As I said some time ago, too many people spend too much time reading secular books. Right. And those secular books are written by authors, and some of them are not even Christians. Yes, we've written numerous books. But if you read my books, they'll be filled with scores and hundreds of Bible verses. That is to help you to understand the subject matter. Right. And uh, I know some things in the Bible can be difficult and hard to Mm -hmm. understand. But it's like anything else. The more you immerse yourself in the scriptures, the more you will know. Mm -hmm. The more you will grow. And then the revelation that the Holy Spirit is able to bring Because we've all read a particular verse many times, but then that one day we're reading it. And you look at it differently. It just illuminates, Mm -hmm. explodes, and all of a sudden you're seeing that scripture in a different light. Mm -hmm. Why? Because the Holy Spirit shined on your mind, your path, your spiritual walk, and let you see it in a totally different way. And that's how you grow Mm -hmm. and you get the vast knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So, Lorraine, we're happy to have you here with Thank us you. again today. Good to be here. And um, you want to go ahead and share with us? I do. So we do enjoy your questions. Um, you know, I, I mentioned our email, talking it out at the voice of evangelism.com. If you email your questions there, we love to talk about this. We want to speak to you guys. So we really enjoy that you guys send your questions in. Uh, a question that we received the other day, um, a lady asked, many proclaim that there's there's no condemnation as in the once saved, always saved philosophy, leaving out the condition that the promise is to those who follow the spirit and not the flesh. And she basically just wanted you to kind of expound on that a little bit. Well, let's go to the renowned passage in Romans 8.1. There's therefore now no condemnation to them who are, which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Now, I want you to notice verse two, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and of death. Now, Paul is not talking in verses one and two about the Mosaic law. Mm -hmm. He's talking about the law of sin, the law of death versus the law of freedom and life in Christ. You might say like the law of gravity, what goes up must come down. So the Holy Spirit convicts us of our sins. Mm -hmm. Uh, The devil is always trying to condemn us. Revelation 12 and 9, he is the accuser of the brethren. Everything Satan says about any of us to the Father is a false accusation because there's no truth in him. And he 
castigated, made false accusation before the throne of God concerning Job. He said, Job doesn't serve you for nothing. Mm -hmm. So Job served God because he loved him. Satan was trying to make an issue over servitude. Mm -hmm. And so again, he falsely accused Job uh, before God. But getting back here to Romans 8 and 1, there's therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Let me say it this way. As a Christian, anytime you sin, you're going to feel guilty. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. If you truly are a believer Mm -hmm. and you're truly trying to walk in the spirit, but you err, you miss the mark, suddenly the Holy Spirit, he will convict you Mm -hmm. and tell you that's wrong. But see, the devil will condemn you. And the reason he brings the guilt and the condemnation is, why don't you quit? Yeah, exactly. Give up. Give up. Mm -hmm. You can't serve God. Mm -hmm. You're constantly failing God. Uh, Jordan and I were talking uh, the other day here in the studio about that. When I was a young boy growing up, my grandparents raising me, Man, I was taught the way was straight. The way was narrow. There's a heaven to gain and there's a hell to shun. And you know, my grandma was adamant, you know, who I befriended and mm-hmm. who I went with. And you might be in the car and they go in there and rob the bank and you're gonna be just as guilty as yeah, they are. Yeah. I mean, she was always hammering me with this kind of stuff. And it was a type of guilt. Yeah, exactly. But I know what she's trying to do. She's trying to keep me from evil. Right. But the problem was she didn't tell me. David, if you do sin, don't quit. Right. Ask God forgiveness and keep going on. Exactly. It wasn't until I came back to the Lord, uh, June the 6th, 1978. I was 23 years of age. I was a very young man. But I understood, wait a minute, because I missed the mark. You know, I, many of you have heard my testimony. I, I quit smoking, drinking, uh, dope nightclubs. I I stopped all of that Mm -hmm. just like that. Yeah. But I had a little bit of a problem with my language. Right. I didn't stop that immediately just like that. Mm -hmm. I had to grow to a state and place that when I did get angry or mad or something bothered me, I could deal with it without cursing. So that's what we call progressive sanctification. I was growing in grace Mm -hmm. and in knowledge, but I realized, wait a minute, God is not standing over me every day with a a two by four to hit me, to abuse me, to bash me when I miss the mark. The devil will, but absolutely. And that's the beauty of Romans two, four, not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance. That's it. Yeah. You know, when, when now, when I miss the mark and we all do, I don't teach sinless perfection Mm -hmm. in the flesh. Yeah. No such thing. A bad thought. A bad feeling, a fiery dart from hell, go into your mind and a a word go Mm -hmm. through your mind, a thought go through your mind. Uh, It's like the man once said, you can't stop a bird from flying over your head, just like you can't stop a thought from going through your mind, but you can stop the bird from building a nest on top of your head. Yeah. Uh, So when that dart comes and they're fiery, Mm -hmm. Paul said they're fiery darts. You don't let that dwell there. Exactly. You plead the blood. You get your mind on, on God. Mm-hmm. Isaiah 26, 3, whose mind is stayed upon thee, he will keep him in perfect peace. Things come against me, and they come suddenly many times. But I've got to get refocused. That's all right. Because that temptation or that thought or, of evil or whatever will try to drag exactly. me down. Can't and let get, it take over. That's right. Yeah. So... There is no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh, Mm -hmm. but after the spirit. So what is Paul saying? If you walk in the flesh, you're going to have perpetual trouble. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think you alluded to the scriptures uh, before we started. Yeah. Romans 7, 15, for what I am doing, I do not understand for what I will to do that I do not practice, but what I hate that I do. That's the dichotomy. Mm -hmm. That's the war that is in the spirit and the flesh. 
My flesh wants to dominate me. Mm -hmm. My spirit wants to dominate me. And my soul is the battleground. My soul is the battlefield. Whoever wins the battle wins the soul. soul. Mm -hmm. If my flesh wins, I'm doomed. My spirit wins, I'm sealed, I'm kept, I'm preserved until the day of the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, let's look at Romans 8, verse 2. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. So as I said, this is like a law of gravity. This is not addressing the Mosaic law. Now, verse 3 does, and we'll get to that in a moment. But Paul is talking about a law of nature that's always battling. For the law of the spirit of life, and the word, the word spirit there is capitalized because that is the Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. For the okay. law of the spirit of life in Christ, in Christ, through his spirit and work on the cross, we have life. That law makes me free from the law of sin and death. Mm-hmm. The law of sin is if I'm tempted and I yield, I've transgressed. Now I have submitted to the law of sin. Right. If I live that lifestyle, that breaking that law of sin will cause me to suffer the law of death, spiritual death, and I lose out with God. Mm-hmm. And so, as I said, it's a kind of a scientific term and that the law of gravity, you throw a ball up, it comes down. Mm-hmm. This is what Paul is talking about here in verse two. Now let's look at verse three, Romans eight, three for what the law could not do. Now he's talking about the Mosaic law. Remember, and I've said this for years, you can never find grace, mercy, and redemption in the 10 commandments. All you see is punishment yeah. and death, mm-hmm. guilt. Yeah. This is what Paul now was talking about. For what the law could not do, the law did not save anybody. The law just pointed you to, sh- to guilt and destruction and separation from God. Mm-hmm. Thou shalt not, thou shalt yep. not, thou shalt not. For what the law could not do, and that it was weak through the flesh, Every man struggled under the Mosaic law. Peter tells us that in Acts chapter 15. He said, why are you trying to put the law on the Gentiles and put this yoke around their necks when us and our fathers never kept it? Yeah. See, what did Moses do with the Ten Commandments, first of all, when he came off the mountain? What was the first thing he'd done with them? He broke them. Yeah. Remember he... He, he, he came down and saw their orgy and their party, and he was, yeah. threw the Ten Commandments down, and he bursted them. There's a message in that. Nobody kept the law from day one. Right, exactly. All the Ten Commandments broken. were broken. Yeah. Literally broken. Lit, yeah. So he goes back up again and gets the second set of Ten Commandments. So Paul said, for what the law could not do. What does he mean by that, what the law could not do? The law could not redeem us. The law was, even though it was strong and powerful and ardent and adamant, Paul says it was weak because no man was able to keep it in his flesh. So how did God correct that? God sending his own son and the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin condemns sin in the flesh. So because the law could not cleanse, save, redeem justify man, God says, I'll send my son, Jesus. Mm -hmm. And Jesus then paid sin's debt once and for all. Every year, the high priest would go into the Holy of Holies and offer that blood sacrifice. We call it Yom Kippur. Some people pronounce it Yom Kippur. Yom, Y-O-M, means day. Kippur, Kippur means atonement, day of atonement. So that would always happen in the month of September or the month of October. So man would go behind the veil, put that blood 
on the mercy seat. That's another profound revelation. God put the law, Aaron's rod, and a bowl of manna in the Ark of the Covenant. But the lid that covered the Ark of the Covenant and the lid that covered the law was called the mercy seat. You see, God already knew nobody could keep the law. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so, and what the law could not do, meaning it could not save, forgive, cleanse, and redeem, God did it through his son. That's why once Jesus died, the law was fulfilled. Right. Exactly. See? And we have regrettably people today who want to live under the law. Mm-hmm. You cannot keep the law. You are unable to keep the law. Now, you may, you may somehow in your mind feign and pretend you're keeping it. But James 2.10 says, Whosoever therefore shall keep the whole law, yet offend in one point, he's guilty of all. Yeah. So you, you just err the, the, the smallest amount. Then you've already messed up. You, you've yeah. broken all of them, he said. Mm-hmm. And that's because the law could not redeem. Right. And so Jesus said, I didn't come to destroy the law. I came to fulfill it. Now, Paul tells us that the law was righteous. Mm-hmm. It was glorious. It was great. But that was the old covenant. That was the old testament. Now God says, I'm going to bring a new testament. And here's what happens. We've all bought a vehicle on a time plan. 24 months, 36 Mm -hmm. months, 48 months, 60 months, however you bought your vehicle. When the last payment is made, that contract is now void. Mm -hmm. It's no good. Why? You've paid it. Right. You've met its terms. Jesus met the terms. That's why he's called the propitiation. Uh, 1 John 2 1 and 2, for we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, who is a propitiation for our sins, not for our sins only, but for the sins of the whole world. So God demanded that sin's debt be paid. Mm -hmm. No one could pay the debt. So God chose his son. And have someone perfect. Yeah. Perfect in every way Mm -hmm. to pay sin's debt. So now when we go to the Father, Jesus is our advocate. Right. So instead of the Father seeing us directly, he sees us through the lens of oh, the Jesus. Son. Yep. His, his, his Nobody only can get to the Father but the That's Jesus. right. Yeah. He's the go-between. Mm-hmm. He's the mediator. Mm-hmm. There's, one, there's one mediator, Paul said, between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. Mm-hmm. There's no other way. And so people who go back, and want to live under the law, are deceived. Mm -hmm. Now you say, that's hard, that's crass. I meant for it to be hard. Because you're mitigating, you're lessening the vicarious, efficacious work of Christ on the cross. Yeah, exactly. You're you're diminishing Mm -hmm. what he did. So Paul makes it clear. There is one mediator between God and man, the man, Christ Jesus. That's why Jesus said, you ask the Father in my name. Mm -hmm. You petition yep. the Father in my name. This is where Catholicism gets it wrong. Well, you can petition Mary. It's believed that Mary, the mother of Jesus, can get favors from her son. Mary described Christ as her Lord yeah, and Savior exactly. and Redeemer. So they venerate, they exalt her as something more than what she is. Yeah. It's called the Magnificat. She, she needed him to be a savior for her, just like all men do. Exactly. There, there was no difference there. So condemnation fundamentally comes from the devil, you know, and conviction comes from the Holy Spirit. And see, condemnation drives us away from the cross. Okay, I sinned. Yeah. I don't want to deal with it. I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to sweep it under the rug. I want to go on with my life. Conviction says, no, no, no. We need to stop. We need to repent. Exactly. We need to get this right. Right. Because we don't know what tomorrow might bring forth. So kind of mentioning that, we, we had another question that really goes along with that. He says, I've been a Christian for a long time, but I've been struggling with a particular sin over and over again. A friend told me that if I keep willfully sinning, God will reject me. Do you think that is true? 
Yes. Yeah. Um, Psalm 66, 18. If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me when I pray. Yeah. Now, I'll be 66 years of age my birthday. Um, I've shared my testimony. I, I practiced celibacy for four years from the time I was 23 till I was 27. There was one thing I, I did specifically. I made no provision for my flesh. Yeah. Now, when this person says, I keep committing the same, the same sin, sin yeah. you got to, first of all, he knows what the sin is. Right, exactly, yeah. He knows it's wrong, mm-hmm. but he keeps doing it. Romans 13, 11, and that knowing the time, that now it is high time to wake out of sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness. Let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envyings. But put you on the Lord Jesus Christ and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. Now let's hypothetically use liquor as this Okay. Yeah. Sin. Mm-hmm. He keeps he keeps going back and drinking liquor or smoking pot. If that's what your sin is, you're foolish to put a pint of liquor in your top dresser drawer, or to put a a lid, an ounce of pot. Like we called it lids back in my day. I don't know what they call it nowadays because I've smoked none in forty three years. If you put that in your dresser drawer, you've made provision for the flesh to specifically sin. Right, because when you hit that weak moment, it's there, super easy to have access to. Just in case I sin or in case I get weak, there it is. Mm -hmm. Well, what you've done, you set yourself up for failure. Um, He's he's, he's, he's a a friend, a brother, a a man I, I pastored, terrible alcoholic. I never knew anyone like him. He would go buy a gallon of scotch Mm -hmm. and a gallon of milk Wow! on Friday, and he would drink it all up by Sunday morning. Wow. And his first name was Jimmy, and he's dead now. But I had such a compassion for that man and his wife. Her name was Carolyn. And I really loved those people, and he just struggled. He just struggled. And what he was doing was making provision Mm -hmm. for the flesh in case he failed. And I got him a a handkerchief, and I anointed it with oil. And I said, Jimmy, put this in your wallet. I said, the next time you're tempted, whether it's at home or you drive to the liquor store, Mm -hmm. and you're sitting there in the parking lot, will you please do this for me? He said, what? I said, pull out that prayer cloth and look at it. And identify that as a point of faith. Yeah. God, I'm not going to do this. Mm -hmm. And I said, God will give you the The power and Mm -hmm. the strength Mm -hmm. to overcome that. Yeah. And from that point onward, he never drank again. Wow. Now, what happened? Even though Jimmy was probably in his late 40s, early 50s at that point, I was just in my 30s as his pastor. But see, he realized, because now he has something tangible. Exactly. And when, and when I would see him at church, or I would go visit him and his wife, they run a little store uh, in Kannapolis, um, he'd pull out that handkerchief, handkerchief yeah. and say, still I got still it. got that anointed <laughs> handkerchief. Yeah. It wasn't the handkerchief. No. It was a point of contact of faith with God. That's right. And the gentleman may be listening who's struggling with this particular sin. Mm-hmm. Get you a piece of cloth, mm-hmm. uh, anoint it with olive oil. Uh, you can buy olive oil on the internet, and the, some of them has uh, myrrh and different, uh, 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 it's like perfumed oil. Right, like essential oils yeah. probably. Yeah. yeah. And put that in your pocket, mm-hmm. in your wallet or whatever, mm-hmm. and carry it with you. I've, I've even had people, uh, concerning their sons or their daughters or grandchildren, I said, take this prayer cloth, put it under their bed. They won't even know it's there. But that is a point of contact of faith that God's going to convict them and get them out of that sin. Right. But 
the brother asked the question or someone told him, if I keep living like that, will I, will I backslide? Will I lose out with God? Yeah. Yes, you will. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And how, why would I say that? Matthew six twenty four. no man can serve two masters. Mm-hmm. Either he will hate the one and love the other, else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You can't have your hand in the hand of the devil and in the hand of God. That's right. You have to turn loose of one mm-hmm. of them. And this is why prayer is so important. Mm-hmm. And I've said this, and somebody reminded me of it in an email the other day. If you keep praying, mm-hmm. you'll stop sinning. Yeah. But just as surely as you stop praying, you'll start sinning. Mm-hmm. I know. You just can't get down and pray and talk to God with great liberty. Oh, yeah. If you know you're just living a you're life of sin. You're going to know what you've done that last week, and there's, there's going to be that hindrance. Yeah. That's the guilt. Mm-hmm. That's the condemnation. Mm-hmm. When I realize I have missed the mark, I don't sense condemnation. I sense conviction. Right. I've done something wrong. I've said something wrong. I handled the matter the wrong way. Mm -hmm. And I asked God to forgive me. Yeah. Now, you know, I I pray every day. And every day I ask God to forgive me of my sins. Yeah. David even said, God, forgive me of my presumptuous things I'm not even aware of. Forgive me of those things. Why? True Christians want to keep the account cleansed. Cleaned, yeah. Mm-hmm. No, no guilt, no condemnation, nothing there. Keep it clean. You know, uh, since I've gotten up this morning and uh, had my devotions and prayed and come in here to the office, et cetera, and we're recording this, I've not even had a chance to sin. Yeah, exactly. See? But my grandpa said something one time, God bless his heart. He said, David, after you live for God long enough, It'll be as natural as a duck going barefooted. Yeah. And he said, how many ducks have you ever seen wearing shoes? And Never. I said, None. Yeah. And, and I thought, it's that's natural. so true. It's mm-hmm. natural. Mm-hmm. To have on shoes for the duck would be unnatural. Exactly. Yeah. So you start living the Christian life. It's, it's a way of life. Yeah. It's a lifestyle. It's a lifestyle. Mm-hmm. Just as a sinner lives a lifestyle mm-hmm. of sin. Mm-hmm. They lie. They cheat. They get drunk, steal. they have adulterous affairs, they steal, they embezzle, um, because that's their life. Mm-hmm. That's who they are. And so when you repent of your sins, now you start working to change all of that. Exactly. And like you said, you got to get back up. Don't, don't beat yourself up that you messed up. You know, just get back up. Keep going. I, I preached a message years ago, having failed God, what do I do? And, get back and, and I've said it many times. It is a terrible thing to fall. Yeah. You know, and some falls are greater than others. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But the worst thing is to fall and I just stay there. That's right. Get up. Mm-hmm. Get determined. I've used the analogy. Put a saddle on the altar and ride it to heaven. There you go. Don't get off. See, the devil will try to buck you off. Oh, yeah. Throw you off. Throw you a curve. And like you said, he's going to tell you, you messed up. You can't do it. And that's what he wants you to think. Well, that's how he breaks people down. Yeah. And, and keeps them down. Yeah. And he'll say things to the believer. Well, if you were really a spirit-filled child of you God, wouldn't you wouldn't have done, have done that. that. Yeah. But see, that's, God knows that's the humanity. That's the Adamic nature. Yeah. You know, and I think about the Apostle Paul. We need to be like the Apostle Paul. Paul defined, described himself as the chiefest of sinners. This guy consented to Stephen's death. Now, how many times do you think when he's penning these epistles, these letters to churches, the devil is saying, you hypocrite, you. Yeah. Look at all the stuff you did. And you think you're qualified. You think you're worthy to write the church of Thessalonica about a, a subject matter of adultery or fornication or, or murder or clamor. And look what you've done, Paul. Yeah. Paul buried the past. That's it. Well, I mean, that's like you. You know, you had a past. You have a testimony now. And, and you don't sit here and, and dwell in it. Well, you know, I, I lived a, a sinful life. So now I can't preach to, you know, the congregation. You don't, you don't let that stop you. I have no condemnation. Yeah. 
Mm -hmm. I can preach with the greatest liberty against yeah. sin mm -hmm. because I don't live a life of exactly. sin. Have I sinned? Have I missed the mark since I became a Christian 43, three, almost 43 years ago? Yes, I've missed the yeah. mark. Mm -hmm. No, I didn't go out and commit adultery and stuff like that. But I did things that I knew was not right. Right. But I was growing and I was climbing the ladder. Yeah. Well, you know. that's it. You, and, you know, new Christians, you don't change just overnight. No. You know, like you said, the language for you, you know, you, that was one of the things that you struggled with. You're not, you know, going to get down and repent and get saved. And then from then forward, you know, I'm good to go. I'm never going to sin again. It doesn't, doesn't work like that. No, it doesn't work yeah. like that. And that's why I don't preach sinless perfection. Mm -hmm. My flesh is corrupt. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm redeemed spiritually but I'm certainly not redeemed physically. Right. My, my gray hair, my uh, broke a tooth the other day again. Uh, just there's always something because of this vessel. Exactly. Is, 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 is broken down by the wages of sin. But the good news is we're well, gonna receive body. a new body. We wanna thank you for tuning in today as we discuss current events from a biblical perspective. Please feel free to send us your questions. Who knows, your question may be the one they discuss on the next edition of Talking It Out. Please send your emails to talkingitout at thevoiceofevangelism.com. Again, talkingitout at thevoiceofevangelism.com. Or write us at Talking It Out, P.O. Box 502, Kayser, North Carolina, 28020. Again, that's P.O. Box 502, Kayser, North Carolina, 28020.